There is something about bridges that make them one of engineering's most iconic feats. The power to create something over the ocean, to connect two places, to open up new horizons. It's something that we feel whenever we go over a bridge. From the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and Tower Bridge in London, to the Ponte Vecchio in Venice, bridges represent promise and opportunity. In this video, I will tell you about one of the most iconic bridges the world has ever seen. The Orisund Bridge Overview The Orisund Bridge is located across the Orisund Strait in the most southern portion of Sweden and Denmark. It's the longest combined road and rail bridge in Europe, which connects two major metropolitan areas, Copenhagen and Malmö. The bridge, which is five miles long, runs through an artificial island and then transitions into a tunnel for another two and a half miles. It's an award-winning double-track railway and motorway that made its official debut in July of 2000. Design At first, one may wonder why the tunnel connected through a two-square-kilometer artificial island was necessary, but it was an important design choice. Engineers and architects approached the construction of the bridge with several very daunting constraints. The bridge had to be tall enough and wide enough to let large shipping traffic through the busy channel. In addition to this, the nearby Copenhagen airport required that there be sufficient air clearance for flight traffic. The fear of an airplane crashing into the support tower of the bridge is what drove the designers to construct a sunken tunnel. Danish engineering firm COWI and architect George K.S. Rotney were the main designers and planners for the project. A design competition was held in order to determine how the bridge and tunnel structure would be built. Of the designs, what would have been the world's largest arch bridge was proposed, but fears of ship collisions kept engineers from moving forward. The bridge needed to carry rail lines under the road, and trains don't function well with heavy movements like what would be present with a traditional large cable suspension bridge. Because of the need for rigidity, as well as clearance and span requirements, a cable-stayed design was selected for the main span. A cable-stayed bridge transfers support through individual cables back to the main tower structure, decreasing movement. Engineers decided to leave the top of each support disconnected from its pair in order to decrease damage in the event of a plane crash. Essentially, if a plane crashed into one tower, the other tower may be able to support the bridge, instead of both collapsing. Before moving on, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Do not forget to like the video and share it. The Construction Process The Orisund Bridge construction was a feat on its own, but a tunnel still needed to be constructed to complete the roadway. There was one slight problem. No island existed to offer a transition point for the road. In a massive undertaking, rock and soil were dredged from the seafloor and built up to create the artificial island named Peberholm. Due to the material of the seafloor, a drilled tunnel was not a possible design consideration, so engineers chose to sink and connect 55 million kilogram tunnel segments resting on a prepared seafloor. Each segment was sealed shut, and the segments were dropped into place using a specially designed barge, along with seven tugboats. The final structure was completed at an estimated cost of US $4.5 billion, with major improvements planned for the future. As the users must pay a toll to cross the bridge, the roadway is expected to pay for itself in 30 years from completion. Almost all of the bridge and tunnel structures were built on land and carried out to sea on customized barges. The foundations upon which the four main support towers were placed were poured into sections using independent rigs. It is also required that daily inspections and maintenance be carried out on the bridge structures, for which there is a specially designed motorized gantry placed under the railway. This gantry is a Swiss army knife of maintenance tools, even including a large hydraulic arm that can extend the road surface. One of the most unique features of this platform is its ability to move the whole length of the roadway, with the capability of turning in order to fit between support structures. During construction, major care was taken not to stir up dust plumes which would kill the surrounding environment. In fact, the artificial island and surrounding ecosystem have become a haven for biologists, becoming home to over 500 species of plants. The sheer size of the project, of course, had large environmental impacts, but this is natural during similar public projects. While not new, the project is still a marvel of engineering. 
being one of eight bridge to tunnel projects in the entire world. What sets this project apart is how much of the design, while artistically beautiful, was driven out of the need for innovative engineering. Sustainability. The goal of the bridge was to develop the metropolitan cities as one of the cleanest big city regions in Europe. Environmental factors were considered important, not only for the sake of health, quality of life and sustainability, but also for stimulating growth and enhancing the attractiveness of the region. The artificial island of Peberholm not only connects the bridge and tunnel, the island has become a haven for biologists from Denmark and Sweden, as its flora and fauna have been allowed to develop freely, undisturbed by man. The Benefits of the Bridge The opening of the bridge to traffic in 2000 had a huge social and economic impact on both Denmark and Sweden. The 10-minute ride encouraged a great deal of mobility and the flow of manpower, goods and services. The number of daily commuters grew from 3,291 in 2000 to 18,000 in 2010. The link has led to new opportunities. For example, in 2005, many Danes moved to Sweden to escape the skyrocketing house prices in Denmark and commuted daily to work. A Danish labor shortage in the mid-2000s led to Danish employers recruiting Swedes. Even the economic crisis of 2008 did not significantly reduce the number of commuters. The Orisund Bridge has created a region with a population of 3.7 million inhabitants. It is now easier than ever to live on one side of Orisund and work on the other. As a result, commuting by car and train has increased dramatically since the bridge was opened, inspiring many Danes to move to Scania. The Orisund Bridge became a cultural icon and infrastructure success in the world.